Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our 8 o'clock service. We're so honored and blessed that you're able to be with us today. I want to welcome everybody that's watching us on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. If you could give the Lord a hand, praise. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He didn't give you steak and eggs, but he gave you a little bit to eat. So let, let's give the Lord one more hand, praise. It is Youth Sunday. Like I always say, the youth is 100% of the future. And if we don't encourage them, somebody else will. So let's give the youth a hand, praise. If you could stand with me and sing, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. This morning with my mom stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mom stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mom stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Yeah, walking and talking. I'm walking and talking with my mom. Stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mom. Stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mom. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I woke this morning. I woke up this morning with my mom. Stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mom. Stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mom. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you guys woke up with your mind stayed on Jesus? There's a lot of craziness going in the world, but God is still reigning and ruling. So we're going to have our opening scripture read by Jalen Overstreet. Let's give him a hand as he comes. chapter 40, verses 31. <laughs> but they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Huh? Oh, Isaiah 40, 31. <laughs> but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. Amen. Let's give Jalen Overstreet another hand. Now we're going to have Derwin Robinson to give us our opening prayer. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Please bow your heads. Dear, please bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody coming to church. Thank you for a home, a car, and a bed to sleep in. Bless the homeless, the sick, and the ones that are hungry. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. 
Let's give Darren another hand. So we're going to have a solo by Minister Lee Roar. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Amen. Let everything that has breath do what? Is everybody breathing up in here? Huh? Well, that means you. Amen. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin for away. Rising, he justified. Sins me forever. One day he's coming, that glorious day. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried. What's your name? Jesus. What's your name? Jesus. What's your name? Jesus. King of King, Jesus, Lord of Lord. Jesus. King of King, Jesus. Lord of Lord. Billy of the Valley, Jesus. bright morning star. Jesus. His name is Jesus. Name, come on, saints. Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 well, bless that wonderful name of Jesus, oh, bless that wonderful name of well, bless that wonderful name of Jesus, no other name I know, well, that power Come on, brother, the rule. Give us the rule. Clap those hands, saints. All right, Sister May. All right, we're gonna get a drummer song. Clap those hands, Saint. Wow. 
power, 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 power. Power to walk right, power to talk right, power to power to live right, power to walk right, power to walk right, power to walk right, power to pray right, power to stay right, power, power, power. We need your power, that Holy Ghost power. That Holy Ghost power, the Holy Ghost power, the Holy Ghost power, 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 power. We need the power, that Holy Ghost power. We need the power, that Holy Ghost power. We need that power. Hold it down. bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Praise God. All right, at this time, we're going to have our announcements by my one and only, Jadik Isaac. Come on down, Jadik. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Yes, come on down. Jadik. Good morning. Good morning, Jadik. <laughs> today I'm going to be reading the church announcements for this week, beginning today, Sunday, August 21st, 2022. Hope in Christ backpack and school supplies giveaway will be held today, immediately following 8, 8 a.m. service in the fellowship hall. Join Hope in Christ for sneakers themed Sunday, August 21st and August 28th. Wear your favorite sneakers. Midday Bible study will be led by Elder Simon Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022 at noon, 1, 1, 1 o'clock. Hope in Christ quarterly town hall businesses, MTG4, member only, will be held on Saturday, August 27th and 11 a.m. Open Christ Sunday School Minister will be resumed soon. More information coming soon. Hope in Christ, Hope in Christ Man Cave Ministry will be held Saturday, September 3rd, 2022 at 10, p 10 a.m. Hope in Christ Food Minister will be held every second Sunday at 10 a.m. Please share information with your family and friends. Amen, amen. Let's, let's give the deacon another hand. Amen. Amen. Next, we'll have our prayer focus areas for Mr. Dijon Travis. Dijon.
Good morning, church. I will be giving you this week's prayer focuses. The first prayer focus area is children safety. The second is church safety. And the third is widow safety. The scripture is Psalm 91 verses one through four. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will, will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and, the, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall you, shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. May the Lord have a blessing for the hearers and doers of this holy word. Thank you, Dijon. God bless you. Next, we'll have our altar prayer by one and only Alan Hill. So we got to switch the room. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's give Alan Hill a hand. <laughs> oh, two people. We can have two prayers, right? Two prayers. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we got Alan Hill and we got Sania. So let's give him a hand as they come. Everybody bowed our heads and closed our eyes. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for waking us all up this morning, Lord. Blessing us to see another day, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to be able to come to church and learn more about you and your word, Lord. I pray that we can have a, a good church service today and that nobody came here with malicious intent and that we all can leave after the service safely. And for those who are going to go to the uh, backpack and supply giveaway, I pray that they have a great time and that they're able to also make it back home safely and that it's a successful event, Lord. These blessings I pray in your most gracious name. Amen. Good morning, Hope and Cry. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Bless this day, Lord. Bless the children who are in school right now. I just want you to touch them and the new students who don't know what to do because they're scared right now and they miss their moms and dads. But I want you to touch them and say, it's okay. I'm with you all of the time and you don't have to forget them because they love you where you are and if they pass, you always remember them and remember you. And bless the homeless, Lord. Bless the children who do not have parents. I just want to touch them. The people who are bullied, tell them to stop. Stop bullying people because that's not right. And that's me because that would make people cry so much. And then I took a shot and said that was the bad day of my life. But I want you to tell them. You just need to pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give Alan Hill and Sania another hand. Grandbabies. Also today is Deacon and Sister Tony and Tracy of Henderson's anniversary. So happy anniversary to them. It is also Pastor, Pastor and Sister Yvonne Ed Robinson's uh, anniversary, so happy anniversary to them as well. So we are up to the offering. So if I could have our youth ushers, if they could join me in this portion of the service. 
Let's give our youth a hand. God is still reigning, ruling, right? He woke you up this morning. If you could bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for wakes up this morning. Father, come now just to bless those that are going to give and continue to bless those that are not. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, hope in Christ. How many of you came to worship the Lord this morning? I said, how many of you came to set your mind on Jesus and worship him? Well, we're going to bless him together because he's worthy of all glory, of all honor. We're forgetting about ourselves, concentrating on him, because there is no God like our God. All right, y'all know the words. Come on, say, just wanna forever and ever and ever. For what, for what? Has he done anything for you? Has he woke you up, given your breath in your body? Come on, praise him. And Donna, they all, all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. For what? Come on, let's sing it. Do you love them? Just want them. How long? Endeavor. And ever. For what? For all. Yes. Come on, hope in Christ. You ought to bless him. We give you glory. We give you honor. There are. Thank you, Jesus. What did he do? Now come on, man. Come on, man. Give him praise. Now everybody just clap your hands in the building. We love you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord, for everything you've done, for everything you are. You've been so good. You've been so good. Come on, man. Praise him. Yes. And honor all of it to him for blessing us. Now let's sing it all one more time. Just wanna forever and ever and ever. For what? You've done so much. You've done so much for me. Blessings and honor it all. Thank you, Jesus. For what? For Come on and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you could close by your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for waking up this morning. Father, I come now just to bless those that didn't give. Father, continue to bless those that did not. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on last Thursday was Youth Bible Study, and we had a, a future doctor, minister, pastor, bishop, Josiah Hankerson. So he's going to give us our review of what we talked about, what he talked about on Thursday. church. Morning. So last Thursday, I made a lesson and a little message about what is the meaning of life. Hmm. And I'm going to give you that message that I told and um, taught on Thursday. 
A common question that comes out around pretty often is, what is the meaning of life? We try our best to find the answer to this question, but with people who have different perspectives, religions, experiences, and wisdom, we are bound to spiral out in finding the answer. According to Reverend Father S., the meaning can be found through experiencing reality by interacting authentically with the environment and with others. So what? Are we just meant to wander around experiencing minor things and events that we're going to forget in the future? Are we going to waste our time trying to achieve these feats that have nothing to do with what we want and what we love and what we care about? Time. Time is a tool in order to help us make sense of what's happening around us. This is one of the pinnacles in which helps explain life. Time is a part of what gives us meaning and is our due date to achieve our goals within that time. Time is our best friend and our closest enemy. Without time, we wouldn't have the dedication to get things done because we have all the time in the world. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, it says, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what has been planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sue, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. But with time, there is a cap, the sudden realization that there is an ending, that's with our that's our will to complete things that we want and to care about. But what are these things? Most say for the righteous, the meaning or purpose of life is to bring glory to God, our creator, and enjoy him forever through Christ Jesus. But how are we supposed to do that? What are the steps to bring glory to our Father God? You may think we need to do something world-changing like solving world hunger or going around the world swooping down, saving people. But God can see the smallest things those things that come from the heart, the things that reflect God's image, the things that we care about, those small things can be helping your family members, praying, volunteering, and even going to church and rejoicing. These small feats are what build up our meaning to enjoy and rejoice, to succeed and praise. Therefore, the Christ, as Christians, we are to live, bring, joy, bring glory to God. And how we do that is through prayer and study of his word, the Bible so that we might better know what he has for us. So we've gone over two aspects to the meaning of life, which is time and rejoicing God's name. But what are we missing? What is the peace that brings us happiness to our eyes? Not only glorifying God, but experiencing our needed goals. These needed goals are linked to time. This time is what keeps us the ball rolling. This is what keeps you praising. This is what keeps you spreading the word. This is what gives, keeps you get out of your bed. The power of the grit inside you that is made up to desires to exalt the Lord with your closest peers. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through four, the, ma the end of the matter, all has been heard, the fear of God and his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into his judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. The goals that you create in your spirit from the Lord is the final and last part of the meaning of human life. Humans have infinite potential that was given by God and we have to extend that to his glory as much as we can. That's my definition to the meaning of life. Time, praise, goals. Thank you. Let's give Dr. Josiah Hankerson another hand. If I could have all of the men standing up, you know what's happening. You know what's happening. All of the men's. So all the men's, if you could just take the choir stand for me. Let's give them a hand as they come. 
Thank you for volunteering. Yes, volunteering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have Frank here, too. Oh, yeah. Let's give him a hand, too. Amen. It's, it's always good to see men on one accord in one place at the same time. Yeah. Praising God, amen. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Maybe he's not good to y'all, but he's good to me. Is he good to you? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. I think y'all know this, amen. We didn't have no rehearsal, but that's okay. We still got Jesus. Amen. for saving me Thank you Lord for saving me You watch over me all night long Lord I know you've been so good Thank you Lord for saving my soul Oh thank you Lord for saving my soul You watch over me Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Thank you, Lord, for waking me Everybody 
you sing, Lord, I know, Lord, I know you've been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good. You watched over me all night long. So good. So good. So good. So good. So good. So, so, so good. been good to anybody has he been good to anybody if he's been good to you just throw up your hands and just tell him thank you if you have breath in your body he's been good to you if you have the activity of your limbs he's been good to you if you have shoes on your feet clothes on your back he's been good to you come on and just give him praise for being a good 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 Yes. Come on, one more time for the men of hope. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Are those brothers still out there? Did they leave? The, the brothers that were standing right here just a second ago? Where's Sister Lisa? Okay, they might have already left. Are they still here? They're still, they left. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Let's give Pastor another hand. So we have the Angels of Hope. All right, all right. Angels of Hope, they do want to do a praise dance for us. Let's give them a hand as they come.
Some about the name Jesus. Healing is in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Power and breakthrough is in the name of Jesus. There is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we can be saved. Jesus. Is there anybody in here that just loves the name of Jesus? When you can't call your mama, when you can't call your brother, your sister, you can call on Jesus. And he's a very present help. Just say his name, Jesus. Come on, he's a way maker. He's a burden bearer. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. One more time for our wonderful dance ministry. Let, let, let's give it up for all of our amazing, phenomenal youth. I, I don't think I have to preach this morning. I think Josiah, Josiah said it all. I think I can take my seat. I, 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 golly. Amazing, amazing, amazing job. Hope in Christ. Youth. And can we bless God for our musicians? few announcements, few announcements. Uh, if you missed the women's prayer call, if you're a woman and you, because fellas, y'all not supposed to be on it anyway. So if you're a woman and you missed the prayer call yesterday, boy, that's what you did. You missed out. It was amazing. A hundred women showed up for the prayer call. It was amazing. So please make plans to be, uh-huh, what? Oh, okay, I, I, thought you was, I thought you was correcting me. I thought maybe it was more. Yeah, so make plans, women of God. Make plans to be on the call every third Saturday of the month. If you have to juggle things around, if you have to do something different in order to get yourself on, get yourself on the call, and I guarantee, I guarantee you will be blessed. I uh, also want to remind you that there will be a backpack and school supplies giveaway. That is going to be held immediately following 8 a.m. service. So thank God for school supplies. It's going to be in the fellowship hall. And a special thank you and shout out to the backpack team. Backpack team, will you stand up? Sister Brenda Doss. Uh, I didn't see Sister Latifah here today. Uh, Sister Shante Rice. Sister Michelle Long. Can we give? Oh, there's Sister Latifah. Can we? This is the backpack team, y'all. And all school supplies were donated by the Seeds of Hope Sunday School class. Seeds of Hope! Hope in Christ, we will have a town hall meeting here August the 27th. This is a members-only town hall meeting here Saturday. That's this Saturday at 11 a.m. Please make plans to attend if you are a member of Hope in Christ. Uh, Sunday school will also resume soon. So more information coming soon about Sunday school uh, resuming. So I know everybody here. Yeah, I'm excited about Sunday school starting back up again. So Sister Helen Long got her hands up too. I'm with you, Sister, Sister Long. Sunday school is coming back. Is coming back. Uh, Glory be to God that eight, that the uh, renovation and steeple repair will be starting soon. So hope in Christ, we are a church that's under construction. And we will see the steeples, we will see the scaffolding, we will see all that repaired, uh, under repair soon. And it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for all of you and your generous donations. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all you have done. Deacon Reggie has the schedule, so if you're wondering about the schedule for the uh, construction, see Deacon Reggie, he has the schedule, all right? Uh, also, please make a special note, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., our new Wednesday night Bible study series is beginning entitled Defend, all right, where we will... Uh, journey into the world of ideas, and we will compare the, the Christian faith that we profess 
we will compare the Christian faith to all these other ideas out there uh, and we'll scrutinize it a bit to see if it stands up in the, in, the, in the ring of ideas. And so we start this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. So please make a special plan to, to be a part of that. Uh, uh, invite somebody, a neighbor, a friend to be a part of that uh, as well. As always, please follow the Hope in Christ ushers and their guidance. Ushers, wave your hands. Don't we have the best ushers in the world? Where's Charles Jones? There he is. Charles Jones, president of the ushers, does a wonderful and phenomenal job. Uh, ushers are doing such a great job. First lady, come on up here. Let's give it up for first lady. There is something that First Lady wanted to say, so we're going to let First Lady say her spiel. <laughs> good morning, good morning, but first giving all glory and praise to God. Um, first off, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who uh, gave of your generous heart. We thank you so much for all the cards and all the gifts. Things it, was, it was just a blessing to us. And since the whole time we've been here, I want to make sure I made it very clear that you guys have been so loving to me, and I want to make sure that you fully understand when looking at you guys eye to eye that even if we <laughs> <laughs> thank you, baby, even if I couldn't actually speak to you, but even even just your love and greet, your hugs, your smile, just come and just say hi to me. I love you guys. I thank you to all of you guys. Also, I want to say, because you know what, in a, in, in a marriage you got, you know, your husband who always, you know, we're always supposed to uh, respect our husband, and then he's supposed to love us, right? And so, with that being said, I guess for me, I want you guys to hear my husband's heart. And I feel like God um, just woke me up this morning with this on my heart, and he showed me, he told me that... Uh, he said that uh, people are grieving. And so he wanted to do this to make sure that you guys knew that we, we were grieving with you. We heard your cry. We heard that you were hurt. But I want you guys to know that we love you. Like, we love you. And I want to make sure that I said it because sometimes you always see him, but you never, you never hear his heart. And so from his heart, I want to say to you guys, that we love each and every one of you guys, okay? And she is my heart. She is my heart. <laughs> We got a we, we got a hot double date after after church today. So so my wife and I will be going out with another couple and we're gonna hang out and have some have a good time and have a meal. So so don't mind me if I just preach for ten minutes and get on. Is that okay? <laughs> some of y'all are like that would be a miracle if you preach ten minutes. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Um, I also want to say something to the uh, Macedonia Church back in Cartersville. They discovered uh, this morning that they lost um, uh, a woman by the name of Mother, Kitch Mother Kitchens, who I didn't get a chance to know Mother Pearl Jones, but from everything I hear about Mother Pearl Jones, um, her and Mother Kitchens were sort of the, you know, same. Uh, Mother Pearl Jones and Mother Kitchens were kind of, you know, seemed like for everything I heard about Mother Pearl Jones, they were sort of the same type of force and presence in the church. And so Mother Kitchens, who was, you know, very, very beloved at Macedonia, uh, she passed away. And so Macedonia, some of them tune into our service. Some of them watch our service. So Macedonia, our hearts are with you. We're praying for you. We love you. And uh, we're standing with you as well uh, in the loss of Mother Kitchens. Amen? Amen. All right, who's ready for the Word of God? Amen. If you're ready for the Word of God, grab your Bible. Travel with me to the book of Jeremiah. Please stand if you're able to stand for the reading of God's holy word. Jeremiah, Nate, can you give me just a tiny bit more? 
Jeremiah chapter 18. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate it. Jeremiah chapter 18, starting in verse 1. When you get there, please let me know that you're there by saying amen. And it reads, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So when I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. Let me, let me read verse 4 one more time for emphasis. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. For the next few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, the potter knows best. The potter, the potter knows best. Father, open our hearts. If we don't hear anything else today, help us to hear your word. Help us to sit underneath your word in submission to it, knowing that your word is eternal, it's infallible. pierces even to the divide of soul and spirit. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. So help us, Lord, to get underneath your word. Help us not to stand over your word in scrutiny. But Lord, help us, Father, to hear from you. Open our spiritual ears. Open our spiritual eyes to see what the Lord has to say this morning. We love you, Lord. We praise you in the mighty, matchless, and majestic name of Jesus. I pray, amen, amen. Although I uh, planned on stretching out our uh, anchored series to this Sunday, uh, I felt led to end it a bit early, which is okay because as a, as a tradition, uh, I preach through a, a series on doctrine every year. Uh, so Lord willing, we'll be walking through a similar series on doctrine sometime in 2023. And I really felt led to take the next uh, couple of Sundays, this Sunday and the next, just to walk through a, a couple of pertinent texts that remind us of God's good intentions for his people. This morning's text is a very touching passage. The passage is particularly touching because it's found in a book where judgment is the predominant and overarching message. The prophet Jeremiah spent a lot of time during his prophetic ministry warning God's people of the dangers and perils to come. His prophecies are actually among the most stark and frankly pessimistic in all of biblical literature. And they were aimed as a rebuke to Judah, God's people, who had utterly surrendered to idolatry and given themselves over to depravity. Jeremiah actually faced intense persecution for his prophetic ministry. But even though he faced this persecution, he stood still and courageously proclaimed the word of the Lord. And in our particular passage this morning, instead of Jeremiah rising to share a message of doom with the people of Judah, Jeremiah is actually summoned by God to receive a remarkable word from him in a very unusual place. God says to Jeremiah in verse 2, arise. Go down to the potter's house and there I will let you hear my words. In verse 2, Jeremiah is being beckoned to a place that invited him and by extension invites us the readers, to view God in a fresh and maybe even new way. 
See, we're familiar with passages like the 47th Psalm, which invites us to view God as the reigning and sovereign king of all creation. We're, we're accustomed to this picture of God. We're familiar with parables like the prodigal son in which we're invited to view God as the loving and forgiving father that he is. We're, we're accustomed to this picture of God as well. We're even accustomed to texts like Isaiah 33, 22, in which we're all called to view God as the divine judge and lawgiver. All of these pictures of God we are familiar and mostly comfortable with. But here in Jeremiah 18, 2, we're invited to view God afresh. We're invited to view him here not as a judge, not as king, or not his father, though, though he is absolutely all of those things, here in Jeremiah 18, 2, we're invited to view God as a master artist. An artist who is busy creating a masterpiece. When God summons Jeremiah to the potter's house, He's inviting Jeremiah into a story in which God is casting himself as the potter. And in this story, God is going to share the word with Jeremiah through this real life illustration of the potter and the clay. And as we view God as an artist this morning, there are some characteristics that we must Remember that most brilliant artists share. Number one, most brilliant artists care deeply about their creations. You will be hard pressed to find a professional artist that spends hours or days creating art only to feel negative or indifferent toward the pieces they create. Once they're completed, most artists cherish their works. They display their works proudly. And they even get upset when their creations are disregarded or unfairly criticized. In other words, most artists don't bring things into existence and feel nothing about what they've created once they're here. They're usually very emotionally invested in what they create. And can I tell you this morning, our God is the same way. God is an artist that cares deeply about all of his masterpieces. There is not one thing that God has created that he is indifferent or negative towards. Can I tell you this morning, God cares about the mountains, God cares about the meadows. God cares about the seas. God cares about every tree and every bush and every flower. And you better believe, if he cares about plants and animals and amoebas, he sure enough cares about you and me. Can, can I tell you this morning? God. The God of the universe, the God that said, let there be and everything was, that God cares about your situation. He cares about your sorrows. He cares about your circumstances. He cares about your sadness and he cares about your stories. He cares about it all. So most artists care deeply about their creations. Number two, you have to understand that brilliant artists are also very creative. Artists know how to take contrasting colors and seemingly competing designs and different patterns and make them all harmonize to create something amazing. Artists think outside the box, and, and when you watch a very skilled artist create something, you're usually confused about what they're creating until they're almost finished. Their art often looks indistinguishable and confusing as it's being created, but eventually, if you sit back and just watch for a little while, you'll see it all come together. This is why when an artist is creating, you shouldn't try to give him advice. When an artist is creating, you shouldn't critique the process. 
The best thing to do as an artist is creating is just to sit back and watch the artist work. And I believe there are times in life where we need to remind ourselves that God is the master artist. And as the master artist, he knows exactly what he's doing. He, he knows what goes where. And he knows how to arrange things the way that they should go. And as he's doing his work, the last thing we need to do is critique him, second guess him, or offer him suggestions. We, we need to learn how to sit back and just watch God work because the God that we serve knows exactly what he's doing. Is there anybody in here that can testify to the fact that, that you've been in some confusing situations and there have been moments where you scratched your head and said, God, what's up with this? And then as the days and the weeks and the months went by, God made everything clearer as you stood in faith and waited on him to move. How many of you know hindsight is 2020 and you can look back over your life today and say, I didn't understand it 20 years ago. But I thank God that I didn't give up on God while I was going through my process because he knew exactly what he was doing. Right. Jeremiah was invited to go down to the potter's house and watch the potter at work. Jeremiah would learn that this was all a picture of how God was going to deal with his people Judah. It, it, it was an illustrated sermon. So, so Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house and he watches the potter. And as he's watching the potter, something, something inexplicable happens as the potter is forming the clay. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he, he was working at his wheel. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. Now, this is interesting. As Jeremiah is watching the potter at work, meticulously crafting the clay, the text says the clay becomes spoiled. The King James Version uses the word marred instead of spoiled. This means that, that, that as the potter is shaping the clay, the clay somehow becomes damaged, deformed, twisted. Essentially, the clay ceases to resemble anything that could be eventually valuable or useful. And with this being an illustrative picture of God and his dealings with his people Judah, Jeremiah might have realized at this point that it was Judah that had become marred or spoiled. As I mentioned before, Judah was engaging in gross idolatry. Judah had forgotten the covenant they made with the Lord. Judah was engulfed in utter wickedness and unrighteousness. So Judah, at this point, resembled the damaged and marred clay in the text that seemed too marred and spoiled to use and definitely destined for the trash heap. And, and, and hear me, it's normally here in the story where we later readers, upon realizing that, that this is an image of the state of the people of Judah, this is where we tend to shake our heads and look our noses down at the people of Judah for resembling the marred clay. It's normally here where we castigate and criticize and condemn the people of Judah for their mishaps, mistakes, and misdeeds. But before we do that, can I suggest we, we humble ourselves? And not only do we need to humble ourselves, but we need to reflect and realize that we collectively were not much different than they were in Jeremiah's day. If we're honest with ourselves, we'd have to admit that we have been spoiled and marred clay from time to time too. Let me just speak for myself. Let me not speak for everybody. I, I don't know about you, but I can admit I've had some moments where my life was completely deformed, twisted, and out of sorts. I, I haven't always been compliant 
and conformable clay. At times, I've been crazy clay. Sometimes I've been conceited clay. Sometimes I've been crooked clay. There have been times I've been corrupt clay, cantankerous clay, conniving clay, cruel clay, and sometimes I've even been callous clay. And I don't know about you, you may not want to admit it, but the reality is, is that we've all been marred or spoiled by sin. Is there anybody that can remember what you were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago? Is there anybody that can lift your hand up and say, yeah, pastor, I've been there. I've done that. I got the T-shirt. And if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I'd still be in my mess. I'd still be devastated, damaged, and marge clay. But because God is good. There are two encouraging things in verse 4 that we cannot miss. The text says the clay was spoiled. And the text says the clay was marred. But where the clay was spoiled and marred made all the difference. The text says the clay was spoiled and marred, Dr. Tyree, in the potter's hands. All right. Meaning that though the clay was twisted, and though the clay was deformed, though, though the clay was all jacked up, the potter never took his hands off that which had become damaged, spoiled, and marred. Man. This is remarkable because the potter could have discarded the clay. The potter could have put the clay to the side and got a new lump. However, the potter keeps this marred, damaged, spoiled, and twisted clay right in the hollows of his hands. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that I serve a God that although I was jacked up and messed up and tied up and tore up, and he never let me slip out of his hands. I was confused and wounded, but still in his hands. I was battered and bewildered, but still in his hands. I was weak and wounded, but still in his hands. I was overwhelmed and overextended, but still in his hands. I serve a God that will keep me in his hands even when the trials of life are beating me down. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm still here because he still has me in his hands. Yeah, he should have dropped me, but he didn't drop me. He carries me. He keeps me. He... And this is why, hear me, this is why you ought to shout about being in his hands. The psalmist in Psalm 19 says the heavens are the work of his hands. The psalmist in Psalm 95 says the dry lands are the work of his hands. Job 26, 13 says he pierces the serpent with his hands. Isaiah 40, 12 says he measures the seas with his hands. And all these passages help us to realize something that should bring us comfort and joy, and it's this. Our God has got all power in his hands so if I'm in his hands I'm surrounded by his power if I'm in his hands I'm surrounded by his healing if I'm in his hands I'm surrounded by his protection if I'm in his hands no weapon formed against me shall prosper if I'm in his hands the devil can't get me if I'm in his hands Satan can't get me if I'm in his hands though the weapon is formed it will not the clay never left his hand That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. It says in verse 4, the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands. 
But look at what happens. And he reworked it into another vessel. As it seemed good to the potter to do. So, so, so follow the text. The potter doesn't just keep the clay in his hands. He doesn't just hold it close. But he determines that messed up and marred clay can still be useful. The potter still sees value in this spoiled, marred, and twisted clay. The remaking of the clay into another vessel was God's way of showing Jeremiah that though his people were damaged and though they were destroyed and though they were devastated, he was not done with them yet. All right. He still had purpose for them. And can I talk this morning to someone listening to me that feels too damaged and too destroyed and too devastated to be useful? Can I tell you that as long as you're in God's hands, as long as you're on the potter's wheel, there's no such thing as too late. There's no such thing as game over. Can you help me preach this sermon and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is not done with you yet. As long as you have breath in your body, as long as you have blood in your veins, I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. There is a God in heaven that can give you beauty for ashes. I don't care how far you've gone. I don't care what you got yourself into. There is nothing you can get into that God can get you out of. Is there anybody in here that can say God can still use me? God can still do something with me that no man, no woman can do. God is not done with you yet. I, see, I, I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I guarantee there are about three or four people that walked in this church ready to give up. There are about three or four people that walked in this church ready to throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel yet. We serve a God that puts commas where we put periods. We serve a God that likes to recycle. He's not done with you yet. But follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. I'm about to go, we about to go. I got a, got a great double date after this, after this sermon. I gotta go, I gotta go. So the clay is marred. Jeremiah sees the potter hold the clay. Jeremiah sees the potter remake the clay. But as the potter is remaking the clay, the potter doesn't ask the clay what it wants to be as he remakes it. The potter doesn't consult with anyone. He, he doesn't seek advice about what to do with the clay he's making. The potter simply determines in his own mind what he will make the clay into. And he does that. And hear me hope in Christ. This is really the best news in the text. Don't get me wrong. It's great news to know that the potter keeps marred clay in his hands. And it's great news to know that he remakes and remolds marred clay into another vessel. But the best news of all to me is that the master artist uses his own wisdom and he uses his own judgment 
to determine what he'll shape the clay into. And this is good news because I don't know about you, but I really believe that when it comes to my family, and I really believe that when it comes to my finances, and I also believe that when it comes to my friendships, my future, and even my church fellowship, the potter knows best. He knows exactly what to do at exactly the right time. He knows what color to put where, and he knows how to mix things so that it turns out exactly the way he wants it to turn out. And even in your individual life, can I tell you, God knows how high to take you. He knows how low to take you. He knows how much trouble you need. He knows how much trial you need. Your father knows best. I wish you'd do me a favor, and I wish you'd tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't fret. Your father knows best. Your father knows exactly what to do. And your father is not seeking advice. He knows best. And because he knows best, can I give you some advice? And I'm going to give you some advice in the words of that old hymn that we all grew up singing. The old hymn says, be not dismayed. Whatever, be tied. God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will, God will take care of you. Is there anybody in here that can say he's taking care of me? He's taking care of it. I don't have to worry about the outcome because the Father knows best. I don't have to stress the result because the Father knows best. I don't have to bellyache because the Father knows best. Can somebody give God praise? I said, can somebody give God praise? Because he knows best. He knows best. The beautiful element of the text is when it says that he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. And when I think about the reality that he made the clay into what he saw it to be, it reminds me of that text in Romans chapter 8, 28 that says all things. I said all things. I said all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. As I take my seat, will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, He's working it for your good. He's working it for your good. It may be confusing, but it's for your good. It may be difficult, but it's for your good. It may be frustrating, but it's for your good. He reworks it. For the good. For the good. And so here's the encouragement. Here's the encouragement. Sit back and watch the potter. <laughs> you frustrated about your bills? Sit back and watch the potter. Bad report from the doctor, sit back and watch the potter. Children driving you crazy, sit back 
and watch the potter. He will do what you cannot do on your own. Come on and give God praise in this place because the potter, the potter knows best. Be patient with me. situation in every facet of your life the potter knows best and here's the reality we're called to submit surrender trust him Proverbs 3 trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's what you ought to do. Now let me say this. I came to this church with the desire to just do God's will. That's all I want to do. That's all I've ever wanted to do throughout my entire life in ministry. Just do God's will. I didn't come to fight. Didn't come to fight. And so, you know, I, I, I am still laser focused on God's will not focused on fighting I'm focused on doing what God has called me from Atlanta 2,000 years ago to 2,000 years ago 2,000 miles away <laughs> to do what God has called me to do that's all I want to do I want to fight I'm not gonna fight and I just believe I just believe that through it all, the potter knows best. We'll talk more. Members of Hope in Christ, we'll talk more at the town hall. Let's stand to our feet as we prepare to get out of here. And as me and my wife get ready to go on this hot double date. Any visitors here? Any visitors here? Any visitors? Amen. Amen. Where? There's a visitor back there? Our sister? Did you want to say anything? Would you like to say anything today? No. Okay. Let's give God praise for our sister. Listen, there are thousands of churches in L.A. County, and you could have gone anywhere. And so we want to thank you for coming. We want to thank you for being here this morning. We honor you today. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Let's, uh, let's get ready to get out of here. Okay. Let's put our hands up for the benediction. Am I forgetting anything? Am I forgetting anything? Hands up for the benediction. What's that? Huh? Oh, the backpacks. That's what you said? Yeah, the backpacks, fellowship hall. All right, now, let's lift our hands as we prepare to leave. Oh. That's right. I'm, my, my mind, my mind, y'all. As a matter of fact, take your seats. Take your seats. Take your seats. I'm sorry. As you can tell, this week has been interesting. And y'all know how my mind works. You know, I'll f remember one thing, forget another. Are there any unbelievers in the room today? Is there anybody here that doesn't know the Lord? 
anybody watching, you don't know the Lord, you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. You need to join this church. If you're here, you don't know the Lord, or maybe you need to rededicate your life or join this church. We'll receive you right where you are. We'll receive you. If you're here, you can come down. We'll receive you right where you are. If not, if you're streaming, inbox us, and we'll, uh, we'll reach out. We'll reach out. Are there any you want to receive, rededicate? Any? Amen. Let's all stand now, and let's get ready for the benediction. This is going to be a Catholic church, as much as y'all get up and sit down. My bad, y'all. My bad. So. <laughs> all right. Let's lift our hands. Lord. We thank you for what we've heard. We thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for the fact that through it all, you still kept us in your hands. Father, help us, Lord, all throughout this week to meditate upon your word and to grow thereby. Help us, oh God, to be centered on this beautiful truth that you know best. Regardless of what the outcome is or the result, you know best. And so we trust you. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. As we leave this place, but never your presence, we'll give you all glory, all praise, all honor. In the mighty, matchless, and majestic name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Go in peace. God bless you.